When Grandma Haikanush moved into the Stepanakert retirement home in 2016, she was amazed to discover that some of the residents actually had families. After observing the going-ons of the facility, she was also under the impression that young people were too quick to place their elderly parents or grandparents in the retirement home. As soon as someone starts losing his mind a bit, his children bring him here, whereas this place is for those who don't have families. She too had been living without anyone to take care of her in the Oskaren region's Aigetstan village when she finally moved into this retirement home, carrying the burden of sad and fateful years. I was married in 1956. My husband died in 1959. I've been a widow for 60 years and raised my two children alone. Displayed in a corner of the room are photos of her daughter and son. Both are gone. Her son, the freedom fighter, Ashot Barsevian, died on the battlefield in 1992, at the age of 33. His father, too, was 33 when he died. As soon as he heard of the liberation movement, he left his family and joined the Fedayim. Back then, there wasn't a regular army yet. He became a freedom fighter and was martyred on June 12, 1992. The freedom fighter's body was found three months later and brought to his mother. That day, Haikanush Tiatik's legs became partially paralyzed. After they found his body, they brought it to me in a missile box. I was so grief-stricken that my legs turned to stone. Haikanush Tatik has been mourning the loss of her son for the past 25 years, but her spirits are now high. Ever since I moved into this home, my broken heart has mended. They take good care of me here. They keep me happy. Although this is a lively environment, Haikanush Tatik doesn't move around much because of her weak legs. Instead, she receives guests. Currently, 86 senior citizens live at the retirement home. They include those who have been left companionless, parents of freedom fighters who have died in the Artsakh war, and individuals with disabilities. They fill their days talking, playing games, and singing songs. In 2012, the retirement home was completely renovated by the Hayastan All-Armenian Fund. The project was sponsored by industrialist Armen Shahazizian of Moscow, with additional financial support from the government of Artsakh. Haikanush Tatik has heard of the terrible conditions of the retirement home prior to the renovation. She doesn't know how she would have made it to the bathroom at the end of the hallway back in those days. The bathrooms here used to be communal. Given my condition, how could I have possibly managed it in those days? The Hayastan All-Armenian Fund has built bathrooms, including showers in every room. In addition, the minute you don't feel that well, you just push this nurse call button and the nurses run to your help. We owe this convenience, too, to the Hayastan All-Armenian Fund. In fact, the staff takes extremely good care of Haikanush Tatik. Everyone, whether it's the director, a nurse, or a cleaner, takes turns to tend to her needs, including bathing her and easing her into her bed. We don't know who is a nurse and who is a cleaner in this place. That's because everybody pitches in, doing all sorts of work together. My darlings, I don't know what I would do without you. Our Datik's pressure is good, too. Of course, her blood pressure fluctuates sometimes. For staff members, it has become almost routine and already amusing to witness arguments that can ignite between senior citizens sharing a room. The reasons for such disputes are usually insignificant. Haikanush Tatik is trying to get along with Mrs. Zalvard. The latter, who suffers from memory loss, was installed in this room a month ago. Well, what else are we supposed to do? This home belongs to the state. We're all guests here. Yet, as it became clear, the two women aren't at peace. At the moment, we're not talking. As for why they're not talking, 
Mrs. Zalvard can't remember. On her part, Haikanush Tatik doesn't attach much importance to it. She knows it won't last. Our hearts are pure, she says. Here in Artsakh, our hearts are pure, our souls are pure, and there is no way the people of Artsakh will surrender an inch of land to the enemy. The Artsakhis are duty-bound to live on their lands. I, for one, will never live in another country. May there be peace in our country. It's a wish shared by the 86 members of Stepanakert's largest family. They also have modest personal goals. For instance, Haikanush Tatik has been saving her pension. Her grandson has long left Artsakh. Perhaps one day he'll come back with his fiance. Haikanush Tatik wants to buy a diamond ring for the bride-to-be. If he comes back with a girl, I don't want people to say about me, what an uncaring grandma she is. Oh, my God.